Hello and welcome to the November Pottery Studio vlog. We are so, so close. I definitely overdid it overdid it this year I definitely took on way too much and I didn't even mean to it just sort of happened that way I just had a couple of opportunities come up with some brand and campaigns and collaborations that I just couldn't pass up because they were such a career highlight in a way so they came up right at Christmas and it always happens like that but with the market and with the advent calendars that I'm doing, I just, I am so tired and it's okay. We're nearly there. I got the list that I showed you in the very first vlog and it's pretty much all highlighted, which is so great. And then most of the things have been crossed off. We're tracking pretty well. I kind of forgot about the advent calendars that I wanted to do when I initially said that I wanted to do about 800 pieces for this market. So with the advent calendars, they are 12 days of Christmas advent so every second day and that means there's 12 pieces I did 40 of them so it works out to be about 480 pieces I think was what it worked out to be 480 pieces plus spares in case we have breakages so it was about 500 little mini pieces that we did just for the advent calendars and so I'm giving myself some grace because I didn't even realize the magnitude I forgot after last year the magnitude of how big the advent calendars are so with that said the tally for finest keepers is going to be significantly lower just because where I've done the work for the advent calendars, I've kind of like subtracted it from the finest keepers tally. So at the moment we counted all the pieces from uh, September, October, was it August? Did we start in August? I think we started in August. So August, September, October, and we're sitting at 400 pieces, which is amazing amazing because we took 500 to the last one and we've got a month to go so who knows we might actually get to 700 maybe and i would be so happy but if not i'm so so happy with 400 alone i think that that's so great and we've got all our classics i've just got to finish off some aussie animals and then i'll be really happy with the selection and then everything else is a bonus so we're going to start the vlog by packing some of those up and then we're just going to get straight into all the making and creating for the last sort of 100 pieces of the finest keepers market let's uh let's get into it to pack the advent calendars we actually wrap them up in some bubble wrap i got from another project each one then had a a designated wrapping paper to match what was inside they then had a numbered sticker that went on them so that it matched up for the day that it came out on the countdown this is so we could keep track of all of them none of them got mixed up and it wasn't going to be a disorganized mess especially because a few of us were actually packing them all we wrapped one piece at a time for that reason so we didn't accidentally wrap up the wrong piece the wrong number and all of that we then popped them into crates and then went through the advent calendars one by one and packed them with one of each number we then checked it again when we added more packing peanuts for it to be super cushioned and then uh, one more time as we added all the little thank you cards and whatnot to the top I just really wanted to make sure we didn't stuff any of them up it's going to be so so fun to have you guys unwrap them throughout December and just see me make them on camera and on top of that I also offered two different size calendars so some of the pieces had little colored dots on them to let us know what was the big and what was the small version of the pieces once they were done we sealed the box is shut and then put the packing bag over the top ready to go out I then released the calendars and they sold out which they did last year but these ones sold out in seconds like it was wild I literally clicked them to go live and then as I was looking it went to zero and I thought it glitched like I thought my website had glitched but you guys were just so fast at picking them up I'm just so so grateful for your support always it just makes my heart so happy that I get to create these pieces for you It looks like a banana, doesn't it? <sighs> I don't know. I'm not vibing with it. I think I'm gonna start again. I got asked by a really big brand to do something really nice for a really good cause for Christmas. And I'm a bit out of my comfort zone. I'm a bit out of my comfort zone because this is what we're doing. This is a, a test example I wanted to share with you. The idea is that we wanna remodel these gravy roads from a thrift store and to sort of inspire people to go out and buy a gravy boat for X product that goes inside the gravy boat. In order to flip something, I can't just pop it back in the kiln because there's so many different types of clays. So I've had to find a way to redecorate these but still make them food safe. So to do that, I've got my like Sculpey 
Sculpey clay and I've got an FDA approved resin that's going on the outside only so not on the inside the inside still stays the same from the original gravy boat and yeah then it gets a resin coating so it's all safe and you can hand wash it and stuff and it worked it's just I am not comfortable with Sculpey as a medium you have to be so precise whereas clay is so flexible and can move so much and I have started this one which I'm, I'm digging I think it looks cool so it's a gingerbread house in the making on a gravy boat. I think that'll look really cool. This one here, <laughs> it has a pattern on it. So I was like, I'm gonna cover it in clay and cover that pattern and then put my flower design on top. And it looks like a banana. <laughs> and I didn't even mean to make it look like a banana. And then I'm like, now do I lean into a banana boat? But everything has to be approved. So I think I'm going to have to take it off and start again. I've got 10 to remodel, but they're going up for an auction, which I'm sure I can share more about this once it goes all live. And yeah, they're doing a shoot. And then I'm, they're taking me to Sydney to one of the op shops to pick them out. But yeah, that is a little behind the scenes of what I'm doing. I'm going to take it off. I'm taking it off. I just, I really don't like it. I don't want it to look like a banana. I don't know, maybe I should change the color a bit. Maybe it's too yellow. So they're coming to shoot tomorrow and you have at least three finished and I've only done one and one of them, the one that is done. The only other one I'm kind of working on is the gingerbread house. And I think I can finish that off this morning, but I'm gonna have to try and whip another one up. Wish me luck. After the shoot was done in my studio, I was flown up to Sydney to do some extra videos for the collaboration. So the collaboration is for Gravox, which is a gravy and sauce brand we have here in Australia. And they have collaborated with Vinnie's Australia, who are one of our major opportunity shops or thrift stores here as well. The initiative is that I redecorated these gravy boats into one of a kind artworks that will be auctioned off with proceeds going back to those in need this Christmas. I'm also hoping to inspire others to buy a boat from Finnies, which not only go back to helping those in need, but will also make for a sustainable and cool one of a kind Christmas present. I just really hope that it inspires you to bring back the humble gravy boat in your own home this Christmas. I'm also not being asked to share this. I just know that you guys would love to know about it, especially if you don't follow me on Instagram and see what I'm working on and maybe place a bid on one of the boats. I just thought this was a cool little like behind the scenes behind what went on when I was getting ready for the content and preparing these artworks is that it it doesn't always go to plan and it does take a bit of like editing and getting together but at the end of the day I'm so happy with how they turned out and I just I just I just hope they raise lots of money and I'm just so grateful to be a part of the campaign after I came back home from Sydney I was actually exhausted I took a couple of days off and then got straight back into it the mission is to just finish as much as possible just pick anything up and start painting it my most important mission though was to make sure we had a heap of Aussie animals ready to rumble again so here I am painting 200 100 Aussie animal arms so about 100 Aussie animals but because there's two arms <laughs> and then filling their little flowers in I popped on a couple of bisclos and decided to glaze them in one big batch now this is a bit of an issue because I usually take it a batch at a time glaze it because sometimes the glaze is not mixed right it could ruin so many pieces it might be too thick too thin I just trusted it was going to be perfect so we spent a whole day dipping the pieces into glaze and then putting them near the kiln ready for firing this was actually super satisfying because unloading kill node after kill node was like Christmas morning every morning for a little bit there. So usually what happens is I'll do a bisque load, glaze it, do a glaze load, then repeat like that. But this one I just did bisque after bisque after bisque and now we're going to do glaze after glaze after glaze. And yeah, that's what, what I don't typically do because if we've actually mixed it wrong and the inconsistencies in the glaze, it's going to impact this whole batch. I don't know why I decided to do this. I just, I really had full faith. It was going to be fine and it just so happened to be fine and um, I'm gonna say it I'm gonna tell you before you even see the kiln unloading is that it was probably one of my best batches of glazing ever and it was such a relief to open the kiln to find that everything worked out perfectly So here's me opening the kiln after the first lot went through. 
is a significant crack. These are still great though. Like I, I will sell this as a seconds because it is a paint palette. When you're using it, the function of it's still there, but the issue is this crack just makes it a bit more fragile. So this one will be a discounted piece at Finest Keepers significantly because of the, how big the crack is. I think I can see another crack there and oh, there's another big one there. I think it's just too hot on that top shelf, which is a bit of a, <laughs> they're a bit sad. They're sad because they crack. Oh, I reckon it's too hot. Definitely too hot, so close to the lid. Because look at that crack through there. I've never had that crack happen there or there. It's only ever happened in those little seams there. So hopefully the kiln didn't get too hot. I think it might just be because it was so close to the insulation. It just heated up so, so much. I can't be too hard on myself because I only got this kiln pre-Finders Keepers last time. So we haven't even had this kiln for 12 months in the studio. It's been such a game changer. And I'm still learning stuff about it every single day. Oh, we decided last minute to change these mush mugs. They were meant to be like rainbow ones where every mushroom was a different color, but we decided last minute to change them to solid colors in colors that we hadn't done before. And they are amazing. They are so, so cool. I'm very happy with that mustard and this brown looks awesome. This was actually a lilac. Actually, it's called lavender. And to me, that looks more bluey, but maybe it's because of the colors it's next to. It's just doing that color theory thing, but that looks more like a blue. I mean, I feel like that's more of a blue color. I mean, I, I, I'm wearing a purple top right now and compared to the purple top I'm looking at, it looks a bit different. Um, purple top versus purple mush bug. What do you think? I feel like it's blue. <laughs> I feel like it's more like blue. That lavender has been so interesting depending on what you put it with. If you put it with like more blue colors, it looks more blue. If you put it with reddier colors, it brings out that warmth from the purple. So it looks more lavender-like, but still very pretty. Still very pretty. Oh, we've got a handle crack. That's okay. It still looks cool. It is all the way through. So that one's going to have to be a pot. We have had a few handle cracks, a whole batch of mugs, which we risked and we compressed the crack in the handle, but we haven't compressed it enough. And we've just had like eight, I think it's eight now with cracked handles. I'm hoping that the rest in here don't have cracked handles, but still early days. That one's perfect. It's just the risk we take sometimes is we push through things that we think might be okay. And then they reveal themselves in the glaze firing. Like every firing, they look fine. And then you get to this glaze stage where you open the kiln and you get some nice surprises, but they're kind of not surprises because you knew about it and you tried to push it and you risked it. I think that they still work as like little pen holders and things like that. And I think sometimes people use them for different reasons. Like I've got a friend who uses theirs as a pot planter. So that's cool. That brown's so earthy and fun. <laughs> no matter how long I do pottery for. My design babies are still and always will be my favorites. Look, oh my gosh, adorable. I just stare at them. I've got three inside. I've got my own work inside. These are one of the things I keep, usually one from every year. Maybe I need to keep one from this batch, but these are just my precious little things and they just bring me, oh, so many heart palpitations, palpitations. I don't know what I'm saying, but they just bring me joy and I, uh, I hope you like them. This one's a mustard. It's kind of orangey, but next to the orange, you can tell the difference. And then I've got the brown. I thought that that would be cool, like a 70s kind of brown. And then I've got one more color down there that I'm really happy about and it's pink. I love the pink so much. It matches the pink of my dress, but look, isn't that pink amazing? This is the perfect pink. Ooh. Oh no, we've got a crack on the handle. It doesn't go all the way through. That's a bonus. It's just on the outside. We like surface cracks instead of all the way through cracks. Ooh. No handle crack. I feel like hopefully we're through all the handle crack ones. I'm obsessing over this pink. It is so nice. I might have to keep one. Oh my gosh. I was nervous we put the glaze on too thick, but we Freaking nailed it. Like cute little mushy with flowers. Isn't that cool? Very 70s, I love it. We've got some bubble gators that are done with the bubble glazing. They turned out pretty cool. I also showed this in a short form, but this is a little mushroom house. I remade a couple of these for the market and they're just gonna be so good. I've got like this little <laughs> cute little vent <laughs> for the incense to like flow out. 
and I actually did like a textured clay at the top for the little little chimney so that it's got this like cool little like texture like a brick chimney very cute we've got some more of these coming through I haven't fired the ones yet that were in the failed kiln load the bisque that failed in the earlier vlog but I'm excited because I think that they will look really cool matte and I'm, I'm still excited. I think that that will be okay. Like they won't be seconds. Do I? No. I'm gonna pack the kiln, but I'm not gonna show you what's going in it because that'll be in the next vlog because that is the final vlog for the year and this is the second last vlog for the year. So I will see you then for that kiln load. I'm gonna be real with you. There was a moment there where I felt like we were going to have to compromise what we were going to bring to the market. We are at a point where I had a list and I said, let's do this, this and this. And then if we get time, do this. And that was between the shelf ducks, the cow milk jugs, the hypnotodes and the sunflower tumblers. And the reason for that was because I was like, let's just take what we think will be the most popular and what we get the most questions about. So the sunflowers got pushed down the list and the shelf ducks moved up, the toads moved up and the cows moved up. And we were just like, let's just get those done. Somehow we managed to pretty much finish all the hypnotodes or like the toads. We did them with flower patterns because we've already done the hypno pattern ones. We finished all the cow milk jugs. We started on some sunflowers, which I said we wouldn't do. And we've got the ducks ready and waiting for glaze. So they just need to have their coats of glaze added to them, which we can all sort of help add to it and add the finishing touches to them. And then they can go throughout the kiln. And I said that I wanted to finish this with an extra week. And now we've got an extra week to finish those ducks and to finish any of the leftover stuff. Like I'm actually shocked. The last week, everything really sort of just came together. Together. This is the list. We've only got the stuff left on this list, but most of it's been crossed out. Now the fern collection, I actually decided to change it to a strawberry collection. And the reason for that was when I did the fern collection, it was winter. So people were sort of in this wintry autumn -y feel. And I feel like summer's gonna be on people's minds and it's more summery. And I just felt like it would sell better at a summer market than a fern design that's sort of wintry. So I changed that over and we've done most of it. Like we've actually finished most of it. The only thing we've got left is a couple of ladybugs which they've been started they just need their little spots and flower details this is with a week to go by the way a week to go of just making and then the week after that is going to be packing and going to the market the priority is to get as many of the little pieces done as possible the reason for that is because the little pieces are those little things that people add they're more budget friendly I know people are just trying to find little trinkety things to add to people's presents so getting the little things done is now the priority once the collections are done so that people can just sort of add them they can get multiple pieces with the same budget as one of the bigger more pricier pieces it's just keeping in mind different budget and price points and then after that we're packing everything I'm gonna do a test setup run through and yeah all the Aussie animals are glazed. Everything's just waiting for glaze firing. Everything's like, I can, I'm gonna approximate five kiln firings. And then I wanna do one more bisque firing to get that last load of stuff through. And then that's it. Like we're just gonna call it at that. And we're gonna call it that we've done enough. I don't know where the tally's at. Last time I counted it was at 400, but that was before I did the Aussie animals and before we did all these extra little bits and pieces like the cows, like the strawberry collection. I think I said 800 was the tally, but I forgot about having calendars. So I feel like we have achieved the goal. In the end, it just might not be that it went straight towards the finest keepers tally. I'm surprisingly happy and shocked that we got there, but not just got there, but got there with like a bit of time, a bit of time this time. We really time managed well. It was lovely, so lovely having extra set of hands. Everything else is just kind of gonna fall into place, which is really nice. It's a really nice feeling to come into the end of the year and being like, all that hard work, it paid off. Doing these vlogs is actually keeping me accountable to doing my stock take because I am trying to show you everything that's coming to the market so I haven't just painted this random thing and you never get to see it and it just goes in someone's home and I've got no evidence of me ever making it. I am trying to photograph everything before it goes away. I am going to have to start not taking pictures and photographing things because it's going to get to a point where it's just pack it. Just pack it, get it packed, get it ready to go so that we're 
we're all ready and we're not stressing at the last minute. But with that said, we are wrapping them up in bubble wrap after I photographed them all. And this bubble wrap was left over from the last market and then padded it with either peanuts or scrunch tissue paper, depending on how it fit in each box. We priced everything, of course, before that. And we used the square terminal I showed you in the last vlog to double check and make sure everything was getting the price tag that corresponded to the item. This is just helping with new hands on deck to get familiar with the price as well and because they probably don't know much about what each thing costs so this was really great to keep things consistent across everyone and everyone knows what everything costs we then pack them up label the tubs with exactly what is in each one and this time we are making sure that everything goes in the same tub so that we don't lose pieces for that reason as well and now it's time to see the remaining tally so we have a lot of different pieces now the font is a little bit hard to read because i didn't think about like that lace thing on the bottom it's probably a bit hard to read it but we have 14 of these coffee mugs in various glazes which are all looking funky and cool we had 17 butter dishes it is actually 18 but one's going in the seconds because there was a slight little crack on the base of the dish and the plate also warped a little bit I am actually saving all the seconds until the last minute because I want to put all the seconds in the same tub at the end and then just have them in a section in the stall so people can go through and pick the seconds out we had 30 red mush mugs we have six rainbow mush mugs there's also four pastel mush mugs that didn't make it into this shop but I accounted it as part of the other mush mug colors so the other mush mugs we have 20 of those in various different colors which I really love all the new colors that we trialed we also have eight smiley face and frowny face paint palettes although because those ones cracked they are also not accounted for so they're going in the seconds pile as well and there were a bunch from that failed kiln firing that are also going in the seconds pile we had 10 crocodiles with the bubble glazing 22 flower dishes now this time i'm actually going to be selling the flower dishes separately because i noticed that a lot of people only wanted like a small one or a big one then we have 40 of past mystery bowls so we've got ducks with hats uh the cow napkin rings the cakes bunch of different stuff our tally for this week was 179 pieces that is excluding seconds and then our final pack tally 329 pieces i can't wait to see you there and i'll share the results of what happened at the market then thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this